Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. And I got a big update for you. We have a big, powerful storm that is brewing. It's forming up with multiple models, showing it is trending, bringing a lot of winds with it, potentially a big, major snowstorm. I'm going to show you all this information you've never been here before. Make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Make sure you click the bell. That way you get the updates. Timestamps are always in the description of my videos. Now let's get into your information. Now when you check with the Euro, you can see right when you get around December 6th and 7th, we still have that high ridge. You still have that above average moving on, but that's going to move to the east. And we started getting a storm forming in the northwest, bringing a lot of heavy snowfall, higher elevation, still bringing a lot of flooding. But you can see right here, you get that little clipper that just moves through the upper Midwest, potentially bringing some snowfall with that while we get a bigger trough moving in and building up a bigger storm potentially bringing in freezing temperatures maybe some snowfall but you get a lot of tight isobars regardless of the snow bringing a powerful storm bringing a lot of powerful winds and maybe a big snowstorm very heavy snowstorm on the wraparound you can see it here for monday going right past new england this is coming for next week into the weekend guys this is a potential big storm brewing up now it sounds a little crazy but you can see the same thing with gfs and this is literally right around six days maybe brewing up some snowfall on a wraparound gfs takes a little bit heavier with that and you get it for the northwest then as you go saturday into sunday you see it still brews up over here for the ohio valley to mid-atlantic maybe over here for the northeast intercoastal but trending the same thing with both models almost in the same areas now this part could get confusing because anything past a couple of days as we all know can change and you see right here for the next 10 days it's literally about seven to eight days away before a potential big snowstorm it will come from the northwest be two parts and we'll add up that second part right after the seventh first part comes around the fourth and fifth and maybe adding up to a lot of snow but look at the difference between the euro and the gfs to see what potentially outcomes you can get this is a euro before this is a euro now showing potentially that big snowstorm that i talked to y'all about last week when i posted that video about what could be coming around the corner look at gfs GFS before shows what Euro is showing now, and GFS now, the 6E, the update this morning, shows what Euro showed before. So it's very confusing about what is coming. So I'm going to show you the potential chances and outcomes in the ensembles of what could be coming out of all this, including your cold weather. Because you can see here with the Euro that as you go into Saturday, into Sunday, bam, it gets that negative tilt, starts bringing in that severe weather on the eastern side of it, and potentially wrap around bringing a snowstorm on the western side of it potentially having two bad parts to the storm showing also as you go friday into the weekend you will have them dew points in the south so the tail whip of this storm could still bring some severe weather as you go literally seven eight days maybe even further guys but you can also see here from your lower level winds 850 millibars it is digging in and bringing a lot of potential storms on the eastern side of this storm look at this on sunday very strong winds aloft and that's going to bring in some damage of winds if that still holds true now still showing and swinging all the way in and i like to add to the fact that y'all remember early last week i showed y'all this with gfs hinting at a big storm coming and this is bringing 40s 50s 60s even 70s right offshore a lot of high winds coming with this system and so far it's coming right in for the weekend as you go saturday into sunday maybe even portions of monday seeing the same thing with gfs as well a little bit tighter winds bringing in more towards upper midwest and central plains 50s and 60s and trans transitioning out through the northeast with a lot of high winds a lot of 50s and 60s trending but there's two things you can take a look at your east pacific oscillation talking about your jet stream on the west coast you are going to be in this high ridge but you start going towards a trough as you go towards the 10th when we get this cold air but then it's going to bobble around all the way until january guys this normally stays right around the center of the u.s from west coast to east coast with occasionally a southern touch of some cold air this don't show anything far to the south but you also see as it's going into that dip that the ao the arctic oscillation you have a dip of cold air that is coming with that system but it's still slowly pulling away after that so we will stay somewhat above average for the rest of december and maybe even going to the beginning of january definitely still showing a warm-up for christmas guys and no big storm coming 
Now, you can see this with National Weather Service when you go from the 10th of December through the 15th that you are going to be above average still from the center to the east coast. It is going to be weakening down. But you have this below average anomaly moving through towards the south central. So let's take a look at this because this part can be confusing. You can see here with the euro that you start getting this a below average anomaly moving through as you go from Wednesday all the way to Thursday for all of the east coast, especially all the way down towards Florida. While well, you got this above average anomaly form up all the way into Canada. Now that's going to swing east. Then you're going to get that below average anomaly come in from the 10th and go all the way towards the south central towards Mexico and stay colder with your temperatures bringing a potential chance for a snowstorm to dip in. You can see it goes all the way to the 14th with that below average temperatures. Then it starts zinging out and we get that above average kicking right back in again. So I know this part could be confusing to a lot of people because even though you have a very cold temperatures coming through, they're like, hey, it's above average. <laughs> Let me explain this to you. So as you're going through, you see all the way till Thursday, it really picks in some below average temperatures. You can see a legend down here on the bottom. All this blue is all maybe going a little bit more than five degrees below average. But all this green starts going past 10 degrees below average where you normally get this time of year all the way through the northeast and for the New England with the purple, maybe up to 15 or 20 degrees below average for this time of year. Then you see all the above average temperatures going into the U.S. and Canada going anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees above average for this time of year because we don't have no big cold blasts coming through. Now you see that sets in all the way towards the east coast. And as we go from the 10th, we get that below average anomaly spiking down towards the south central and Mexico. Now look at this. Even though it's a cold air coming down, this is not like that big freeze that I showed you about Texas a while back. I'm very proud to be the only one that announced that over a month early. People follow after, which is a good thing, but I will tell you what's coming early. And this is all 5 to 10 degrees below average what you normally get for this time of year. Now, this is a classic El Nino setup where you have all this cooler temperatures coming through now this isn't super bad temperatures it's just five to ten degrees below average so it will be a little cooler but it's not going to stick around it's going to come through rather quick so you can see i hear from your temperatures as you go tuesday wednesday morning it warms right back up every single day as you go into thursday then you get them very cold temperatures coming down into florida and the east coast because you're going to be a below average usually you don't feel this like this this time of year as that swings through and every single day is going to warm right back up. This is going to be overnight cool temperatures that's going to swing through with this system. Now once you go through the ninth, the cold air is going to start coming in from the west. Once you come through the 10th, it's going to start making it all the way towards the south with freezing temperatures, a lot of 40s. And as you go all the way to the 11th, it goes towards the southeast. Now remember, these are not your highs for the day. This is your morning lows as you pass by. It will warm right back up every single day but we do have these cold temperatures as that's swinging through all the way until maybe even tuesday or wednesday with this anomaly very cold temperatures and the wind chills will be even worse now i will update you on these temperatures that's why i'm going rather quick with them today but you can see with your wind chills for the 9th for the 10th goes even further to the south for the 11th you really feel it in the south especially with the wind chills and for the 12th it hangs around again now, this is classic what you normally see for an El Nino setup. We're in a strong El Nino and maybe even going to a historically strong El Nino, guys. Look, it's bringing cooler than normal temperatures in the south, warmer than normal temperatures all the way to the north. And that's what we can expect all the way to May, all the way to probably to June. Then we're going to go into a neutral phase and maybe La Nina kicking in as we get into next hurricane season. So you can see here from your latest Enzo report that El Nino is anticipated through the whole northern hemisphere through spring with 62% chance during April all the way till June. But there's a couple updates I want to show you. First, you can see here that when you go all the way to May, June, June, July, and August, that you do have that neutral phase kicking in and taking over. El Nino will be going away. Neutral phase will be more favorable than El Nino. Now, as you look at your long range, you can also see here as you go all the way to July, August, and September that we're still going to be in that neutral phase for the next hurricane season. But La Nina is starting to kick in a little bit and trying to get in for next hurricane season. 
But when you take a look at all the ensembles, you can see not only is it not going just on a big dip, it's going on a gradual curve to where we might just stay in the neutral impacts, a little bit of La Nina as it might go back towards neutral. Now everyone knows that when you're in La Nina for hurricane season, you have above average cyclones forming in, trade winds are favorable, temperatures, everything gets favorable for some strong hurricanes. Now you can see here that even with a neutral, it still don't matter guys, because even with the El Nino, you typically get half as much hurricanes and a little more than half of the named storms. Whether it's neutral or La Nina, you get more named storms, you get more hurricanes. So even a neutral phase the next hurricane season will be a stronger hurricane season than this year. Plus, based on the latest forecast, is that we have a strong chance of greater than 55% of being in a strong El Nino for January through March, guys. That's a strong statement right there. Plus, there is 35% chance of this event becoming historically strong El Nino passing through. Matter of fact, look at the update with the Euro control member on your potential snowfall. But as we get that cold air smashing all the way towards Mexico, the South Central, you can see maybe for the four corners, maybe for Western Texas, y'all might get some big impacts rolling through. But for everybody else, not a lot going on. So when we look at the transition, you can see all the way to the 10th, not a lot coming out with that snowstorm. As it moves through, it's going to hit the South Central for it and then maybe raise right back up after that all the way to the 20th guys and then maybe as you go towards christmas above average pattern kicking in warmer temperatures still showing no snowstorm coming for christmas now maybe after christmas might start setting in that deep el nino trough and maybe some cooler temperatures hit in maybe even showing a little stronger chance as you go even further towards the beginning of january and as you go to the last click maybe a deep chance of finally hitting the south now this is the beginning of January. Besides this shot right here, this is literally a thousand hours away. And the snowstorm that I showed y'all for right here and 30 to 35 days away, this one already changed as well. So how much more do you think this is going to be true? A look with CFS and it is a long range and see what's going on with the temperatures for December 20th, 21st. You see you get a little bit of warm up, 22nd, 23rd, Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, it just stays in that warm anomaly. You, people get colder in the Northeast, the Great Lakes, and the Rocky Mountains. That is their normal temperatures for this time of year. Matter of fact, it's a little above average because it's not that cold. It's in the 20s. But this is a pattern you can expect as you go towards the end of December, guys. A warm-up. Trying to see if there's any kind of snowstorm coming for Christmas for the 22nd. It all warms right back up for the 23rd. For the 24th and for Christmas Day. Nothing showing us any big snowstorm, guys. We're in an above average warm pattern. I could just be talking shenanigans now. Let's look through the ensembles. You can see here with all the ensembles, all the way for two weeks, which we know changes anyway. Don't worry about these. This is your control member. Control member is showing you still gonna get higher elevations in Washington and Oregon, Idaho as well, maybe even for wyoming and a little bit of utah maybe but not much snowfall coming through guys as we add up for this next snowstorm next 10 days going beyond 10 days what could be coming you can see right here for your control member we we'll have a little clipper coming through maybe bringing three to five inches of snow in that blue all this gray is one to two inches i tried checking for y'all in the south central i know y'all want a snowstorm i'm from the south Trust me, it comes like once every 10 years. You can see with all the ensembles, only one hitting at any snow. And this is normally what the Panhandle of Texas will see, maybe. Not showing that is true, guys. No snow. Also, as the system moves through the Great Lakes, you can see all the way for the next 10 days what the outcomes show. Potentially, some big snowstorms could come. We could go even further. And maybe more snow could be starting to add up. Look at a control member. Not a lot. That blue is three to five inches. That gray is one to two. Also, as it goes towards the northeast, guys, as it piles up, potentially 10 days and further. Everything's on this high ridge. Everything's going towards Canada. Look at this. Look at a control member showing us not bringing a lot of snowfall. Once again, 
maybe one to three, one to four inches in this gray and this blue right here, really higher elevations is going to see that major snowfall. It's not bringing a lot. We're going to be on a warm up, guys. But thank you again, everybody. I hope this has helped you understand what is coming around the corner. I will keep you updated on this next powerful storm moving through because it's looking concerning. It's trending with other models as well. So we'll let you know what those impacts are as well. So far, there's no National Weather Service severe weather for the next eight days. I will update you. That will change. And I will update you also on this potential snow coming with it. I do think we'll see less and less. That's what the ensembles are hinting at, guys. Now, before you go real quick for your Sunday, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 14 through 18. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe every single day of your life, you and your families and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day. Everybody.